Hey guys, Chris the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. In my workshop here on the bench is a an Acer Nitro 5 gaming laptop. Now it was dropped off to me in the e-waste. It's a bit damaged um, and it wouldn't boot up when I first got it because it was dead flat. Uh, I've done a little bit of cleaning out on it. The fans were rubbing underneath. Had a few little issues, but it has fired up. I've got to repair though the charger because it's intermittent, it, it charges sometimes and not others. But it's a pretty cool laptop and not bad to score in the e-waste. Let's have a closer look and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. It's actually the same model as Christine's and she uses hers for all her YouTube uh, editing and uh, it's a very fast machine. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's a, it's a Intel uh, Core i7 8th Gen. Uh, and it appears to be nice and fast and, and everything. I've actually formatted it. I managed to, it had a password lock on it. And uh, I discovered there's a key, I think it was Alt 10 when it's booting up, that you can actually reset it to factory settings. So I've done that because I'm not interested in, I don't know, there possibly might have been data on there, I don't know. But uh, I don't want the data anyway. I wanted a nice, fresh, fast computer. So it's been reformatted. I've got my own password now on here. Uh, to log in with, so that's all fine. I've, it connects to our internet beautifully, and I have um, already downloaded um, Dropbox so I can access my files. And the plan is, I was initially thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to scrap this one out. You know, the, it's going to be worth a bit because it's an i7. And I looked online, and they're selling from $500 upwards. But this one has a bit of damage, so it wouldn't be worth that. However, someone would surely buy it for parts. The screen's good, as you can see. Uh, it's had some home repairs. The hinge is actually broken uh, and it flexes a bit. There's a crack through the case. There's a crack on the bottom case as well. And also where the charger goes in and you can see it's flashing now intermittently. Uh, the battery is good because I got it fully charged off Christine's charger and it lasted about oh, two and a half, three hours. But um, the socket has pushed in and it's not connecting properly. And even when it does connect properly, this charger is intermittent, as I said. Uh, underneath, it's got some major cracks right across the case here. And I think one on the other side. Some of the screws, um, have the posts have broken out. So it's been abused a bit, and I'm surprised that the screen is not actually damaged. Particularly with this um, very agricultural looking repair here. They've punched screws through to the top. Uh, and you can see it's cracked on the top there. But as a, as a computer for my shed, if I have this set up in here, it's going to be very handy for me to do all my editing while I'm in the shed to save lugging my other computer back and forward to the house, to the shop, and out to here. The actual PC seems to work well. If I can get the charger working consistently, uh, I'll just leave it permanently on this bench. I won't have to worry about folding it up, carrying it anywhere, and causing any stress on the screen with those cracks. So after that rather long-winded intro, this video is to see if we can fix the charger. Now, I've just got it hooked up here to my meter. It's pumping out 19.5 volts or thereabouts. And sometimes when it's on the laptop charger and I hold my mouth the right way, it will charge consistently. And other times it will click in and out and in and out. And I'm sure the plug is connecting okay. And I don't think there's any issues inside the laptop. We did actually try this charger on Christine's laptop and it was doing the same thing. It charges for a while, then it clicks out and uh, sometimes it just doesn't click in. So there's some sort of intermittent fault. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the wiring or it's actually in the charger and we're going to have to try and break into it somehow. I guess the first thing to check is to make sure that the mains plug is okay. But I'm just keeping an eye on the meter while we're mucking around here and it's fluctuating a little bit but it's showing no signs of actually cutting out. We've still got our, over our 19 volts. And I've been wobbling all the plugs and that's not having any impact. So the I think the fault has to be in here somewhere. So this has been going fine for quite a long time. Obviously when there's no load, the charger can deliver its 19 and a half volts quite well. We need to load it up now and see what it can do. So, okay, in a box of junk here, I found a 17-volt uh, globe, and I didn't even know they made them. And I think it's about 20 watts. So, according to my calculations, that should give us 
an amp or an amp and a half of drawing out of this power supply and we'll light that up and the voltage has pulled back a little bit but it's quite stable now so that's a good sign but as I said that's probably only an amp and a half we better put an ammeter in and just see what it is drawing so now we have an ammeter in the circuit so let's connect a terminal down here I've got wires running everywhere light the globe up and we've got a bit over 18 volts and we're drawing one and a half amps so the power supply seems stable at that but it is a seven amp power supply i noticed it's rated at 19 volts 7.1 amps and i don't really know what the laptop draws when it's running off the power supply or whether it's charging a battery so one and a half amps may be not not enough to stress it it's certainly servicing that charge okay or that demand so let's try and increase our load okay i just tried some extra light globes in the circuit and to increase the load and it all performed nicely unfortunately i forgot to press record on that but uh so i've plugged it back in to the actual laptop and it's not charging and you see our battery levels pretty low but it is plugged in and i've got an ammeter here in the uh, in the main side and it's hardly drawing anything now i did have christine's charger out here for a comparison and that was drawing about 250 milliamps and charging the laptop perfectly so even though this charger performed well i loaded it up with two or three amps of current draw on some light globes it's not delivering anything now and the laptop itself was just beeping when it was cutting in and out. Now, I did notice there's a little bit of sparking when I moved this plug in and out. And I'm not sure if you we well, probably won't be able to hear it. But as I was pushing this in, you can hear it sparking a little bit. If I push it in now and watch the current draw, it goes up high. The laptop starts to charge. Now it's, it's oscillating in and out. And our current draw is up to where it should be. That's what Christine's did. Around about that. 200, and now it's cutting out and dropping down again. So it's certainly intermittent. I'm wondering if there's a poor connection that's in here that's making it spark or whether there's a capacitor that's no good on the board or something. But uh, we totally need to get into this black box and have a look. Okay, let's try our new over bench camera mount and hopefully it works all right for you guys. Uh, you might see a bit of shadows because the light's on the other side. All right, we'll get rid of this sticker. And we need to try and break the seam somehow. Now, when we're scrapping these things, one hit with the hammer and they fall apart really easily, but I don't really want to damage it or at least crack it badly. So we'll see if we can jar it open. Not sure if it's glued or clipped. I might try our watch back opening tool. Oh, it's certainly tight. We may have to give it a jolt with the hammer just to break the glue. So I thumped it with the hammer around um, with a screwdriver, but just sort of gently, you can see it's left some marks. I'm not so worried about that, but I think we may have made a bit of progress. And I just need to kind of get it to move right round certainly wasn't going to fall apart easily I might need a little bit more hammer work okay I'm nearly in here this is very difficult um, it's quite soft I've had these before where they're fairly brittle and one tap opens them up but these are very soft and every time you leave it with the screwdriver it just seems to gouge the plastic but i think we'll get in as i said i'm not overly worried what it looks like it's just something for my workshop to uh, power this laptop and if i can't fix it i'm just going to buy another one anyway or maybe i might have a second hand one at the shop that will work okay let's see if we can finish opening it up well that was really a challenge but i finally got it open I've chewed around the edges quite a bit and the screwdriver jammed through at one stage. I don't think it did any damage. Just caught a wire there. 
All right, so let's get it out. And get the shielding off. Okay, hopefully we haven't got really bad reflection for you guys. There's a lot of shielding on these. It's a genuine um, Acer charger. And when you buy an aftermarket cheap charger, they don't have anywhere near the shielding on them, which means they're very noisy like all the switch mode power supplies that aren't properly shielded, they create a lot of static on everything else. Okay, it's got shielding everywhere. But we need to get into the board. It's sort of glued on as well. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Well, we have a earthing point there I'll have to unsolder. Okay, that's got that out. So we have a lot of glue. And we still have more shielding on top here. And it's glued on as well. Okay, looks pretty messy. Okay guys, I think I've had success here, but I uh, have just demonstrated that I've, you know, sometimes you can do a lot of work that's unnecessary. I've got the back off the laptop over here, the lights over this side of the workshop at the moment. Uh, what I did with the power supply is once I got it apart, as you saw, I just checked all the connections, all the capacitors, and uh, everything looked okay. And the weird thing was that I was getting 19.5 volts all the time, but it's just seemed every time there was a load on it through the computer, the uh, the voltage would break down, or at least the current would break down. Um, but what I think I've discovered was that the problem was simply in the plug. Now, it wasn't the socket, because as I said, Christine's computer charger worked fine on this one. Uh, but I checked everything, and I had voltage, and I could get things to change by wobbling the plug a little bit, only sometimes. Um, so it was certainly a weird problem, because it kept I kept thinking the problem was back in here somewhere. By the way, the lead's on there, because... Without uh, those heat sinks on either side are connected by the shielding and with the shielding off the connection doesn't happen and I actually had a voltage difference across them. I had a bit of a tingle through my fingers, nothing much, but uh, I realised that I should have had it connected to have it powered on. It's running now and the current draw is pretty well exactly what it was through Christine's charger. So it's about 250 milliamps through the mains. Uh, which I think is about normal. The yellow light's on here all the time. Uh, I can't hear it clicking in and out, so I think it's charging the battery nicely. So what I did to fix it was the plug's very firm now. And if you have a look at the plug, once I get it out, let's see if we can get a focus here. It's got, down each of those side pieces, you can get a fine needle in there and the part of the terminal that grabs the center pin, uh, the part of this plug that grabs the center pin is actually a spring-loaded piece of steel on each side, or a spring-loaded terminal, I guess you'd call it. And it's a fair way in, you can't quite see it there. And I don't think we're gonna get enough light to show you. Let's see how we go. I think we're gonna look, oh no, you can see it there. See that little shiny bit on the right-hand side? I've got a needle down beside that channel there and bent that spring clip in and I've done the same with that other side you can see that clearly there now so what I think was happening was they were just connecting but the moment there was any current draw the connection was breaking down but now that I've bent them in the plug is really firm and it instantly charges non-stop draws the proper current it's all working fine so it was only a simple problem and this happens a lot. How many times is it just a simple problem that often gets overlooked and we get too involved in looking at, you know, what else could be wrong? So it always pays to check simple things. In this case, I didn't do it first. But honestly, I thought the plug felt quite okay and I couldn't get it to do much when I first wobbled it. But that appears to be where the problem was.
And I should mention that the reason we had good current draw through the charger with the light globes was that I had a little piece of wire into the center of the plug and it was obviously bending across and making good connection with the positive pin. So problem solved, bit of a nightmare, but we got it done. I did find a couple of chargers at work today that were going to, I think the plugs are the wrong size, but I was going to try and modify them. As it turns out, I don't have to. Now I just need to put this back together. Okay, guys, we're all done. Here's my new gaming laptop set up on the bench in the workshop uh, where I'll do a lot of editing and do a bit of uh, uploading and whatnot. I do it inside as well. I also do it at the shop. But it's nice to have a permanent computer here that I don't have to pack up. It's performing brilliantly. It's charging nicely. I've got the charger back together. It looks a little butchered around the edge, but it's not too bad. I've super glued it together. And I'm pleased that I solved the problem, even though it's a little annoying that I probably didn't have to go to that much work. But it happens a lot, and it's all about learning. And it just goes to show we should always check the absolute basics, even though in my defense I did check it and I did have voltage. And it was just, it seemed fine until it was under load and I wasn't aware that it was actually the pin connecting inside. But you can see we're drawing good current there through the ammeter. It fluctuates a bit. I guess depending on the demands of the battery but uh, I'm just going to leave this permanently set up it'll probably be permanently on the charger it's a great score out of the e-waste didn't cost me a cent um, a little bit of time mucking around to get the charger going and I've cleaned out the back I also super glued one of the cracks in the cases while I was there so there we go all done I'm very happy with that acquisition to the shed speaking of acquisitions to the shed just before we go I now have a metal pole up on the ceiling which is um, bendable in all directions and I have a camera mount there on the end that can uh, rotate to different spots and I'm going to be doing my over the bench filming with that one which you saw earlier hopefully that works well so this was a recent purchase pretty happy with this I've got one for it in the main shed as well and Christine's also using one in her sewing room so here we go, recording through that stand now. I think it'll be uh, good to get different angles, especially the vertical angle over my workbench when I'm doing repairs. So thanks for watching, guys. New addition to the shed. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.